Hi, how's it going? This is Resident of Colwyn. I'm here to review John Philip Betancourt's continuing blog series, The Return of Dark Shadows, Series 11, Chapter 2, No One is Safe. And if you need a babysitter slash governess, who you gonna call? Especially if you have a haunted house, Serena Belvoir. That's right. I actually... It, what's funny about this is I like what John does here. He takes one of the most oldest legends around a baby, uh, you know, sayings around a baby, that when babies tend to laugh or giggle, some people say, well, there's a ghost or there's an angel watching over them. And that's one of the oldest, you know, sayings that parents... Well, I remember when my kids were babies, and they would laugh, and they would giggle, and there would be nothing there. And it's sort of funny, when I read that, I'm like, it made me feel like even more of a connection to this this um, series and this chapter here because of me being a parent and reading that part. So I really like that part, and I like the fact that, you know, she does see a shadowy figure, and it's Barnabas. And, it, you know, she sees his face and in the mirror. And it's really creepy in so many ways. And she's definitely creeped out by it. I mean, she's she calls uh, <laughs> Sebastian, her, her, her boyfriend, Maggie's uh, son. <laughs> and she is a flippin'. I mean, she, she ain't no Ghostbuster. She's like, she's call, like calling people like, you gotta get this. This is crazy. And I love that because, I mean, what what the hell would you do? I mean, seriously. Like, in that moment, you, you see uh, literally what you feel is a ghost. What the hell would you do? Um, I'd be calling somebody, that's for sure. Um, but, <laughs> so she calls Sebastian and, you know, him and Maggie come over and they talk to her. And... Maggie convinces her to keep all this quiet, which I don't blame Maggie. You sort of, it's not, I don't think Maggie does this to be secretive, in my opinion. Maggie more does this to, I feel she's more doing it to protect the family. You know, she, she loves Carolyn, her and Carolyn are best friends. In my opinion, I could be wrong. Um, Again, guys, when I review this, I give my full-fledged opinion, and I'm going to make a prediction uh, at the end of this video, so stay tuned. Um, I'm going to have a prediction in the next video as well. <laughs> so, full of predictions here tonight. My wife just looked at me. What? I am. I am. Um, but, <laughs> see, she... Are you psychic? No, I'm just full of predictions. But, um, they could be wrong. So... I really like that part. I like the interaction between David and Sibhan. They sort of fought at the party. And I like this how in this story, it, Maggie's involvement is pretty heavy. And really, I've always said with the, with this series, you know, the writer, John Philip Betancourt has always found everybody to do something with. And, you know, just when you think he can't find any more to do with these characters, each of them, he does. Um, <laughs> that's what I've always been amazed by uh, as well. So, I'm not saying I doubt him, no, but in the same sense, you go, what what more could he possibly do? And then he, then he shows you what more he could possibly do. Serena being babysitting John, who is David and... So, so you Bohan, uh, son, um, and you have Sebastian and Maggie getting involved because she calls them. So, two new character introductions here I want to get to. Before I do, I, I really, my favorite part, and, and why well, I'm going to come back to this, is the interaction between Julia and her daughter. I really feel that those two really are going to have a lot of moments in this chapter and not in this just this not just this day here but this whole thing and you can feel that it it really is building in this not all of it but some of it not not the most part of it but you can feel the tensity that 
Quinn, wa Quinn Devereaux wants answers from her mother, and you can sense that not just in her tone, but in her body language. And when you when I say body language, I always say John manages to take you there to the to just stand there and watch them, and he really does when they're talking and they're discussing and they're in the new DA's office and they're interacting with each other. And I want to get back to that part, so I'm going to go to the dinner because I got a prediction about that part that's coming. I really I know John said this was a hot mess. I respectfully disagree. <laughs> I'm respectfully disagreeing with the writer. That's what you do. Um, I actually liked it a lot, and here's why. Because here's the Collins family. There were, they, you know, six months have come and gone. Which you got, and that's something we you got to realize with this six month. And that's something I forgot to mention in my first review, so I apologize. Six months have come and gone since the events of the battle with Angelique. They don't know she's still hanging around. So, what you have here is they don't know that Cassandra is Angelique. That Angelique is basically, like I said in my last route, everywhere and nowhere at the same time. And she damn well is. Which, again, makes her terrifying and scary to deal with. And in this dinner, they're so focused, I think they're so focused on Andrew because of Alexandra's happiness. I mean, really... That's something I would definitely take away from this when I, definitely I took away from this when I reviewed it. That when I read that, this is about all the, all the hell that Alexandra has been through losing Christopher. And then like John said, in some sense she didn't really lose Christopher because of Andrew getting his DNA. But Andrew, while yes, has Christopher's werewolf DNA... Andrew is very much his own man, I would say, in my opinion. And that's, uh, I think, a lot of what this celebration is about, too. Here's Andrew. He's his own person. Though he has some of Christopher's DNA in him, he's his own man. He's his own person. And really, when I sit here and say Alexandra Thorne is in love with Andrew Shaw, she really is in love with Andrew Shaw. This isn't she's in love with Andrew just because of Christopher's DNA, in my opinion. Um, that's my view as the reader. So, I really enjoyed that. They weren't so focused on, and that and too, they weren't so much focused on Cassandra and Curtis. They were more focused on Curtis because of Victoria. But the credit questions were brief and to the point, and that's exactly how it, it to me, it should have been. Because, again, you're here for another reason, too. And then I love the conversation, how he squeezed... Maggie, Sebastian, and um, Serena that squeezed it in there in the dinner, and they're talking quietly amongst themselves where no one can hear them or whispering. So I love that, and Maggie decides to call Granger, who is a, a paranormal researcher, which I love. I love the intro that introduction. That introduction was very, very smooth. Um, throughout this series, John has always found a way to smoothly introduce these new characters. Like, holy shit, here's another new character. Well, here's another new character coming. Um, and I can't wait to meet the Nat new character and what he's going to do. Um, now, here comes my prediction. You ready for this? The new district attorney... I want to... What was his name? Um, I'm probably going to mess it up. DeMarco, I want to say. If I if I mess it up, I apologize. But that's, that's not the important thing here. Okay? Okay? And we pay very close attention to what I said. That new district attorney is actually Quentin Collins. Now, some people are going to point out well, wait, Julia Hoffman was there. So how didn't Julia recognize him? Aha, I got, I got your explanation. Let me give you my theories of why I think this is Quentin, too. Don't worry, I haven't forgot. Julia, remember, she died in the 1970s, and she was resurrected by Barnabas through time travel. And she's been going through so many things, she may have just forgotten Quentin altogether. And really, she hasn't seen Quentin in how many goddamn years? I mean, really. 
And why do I feel this is Quentin? What what to me says it's Quentin? Number one, the wink. Okay? Nobody, and I mean no character in DS history, was more smooth with a woman than Quentin goddamn Collins, okay? Nobody. Nobody. No offense to any other character. There was no one smoother with the women, and he was so smooth with Quinn. I, I mean, smooth. Real smooth. He winks at her. And in the eyes, he's a werewolf, uh, in my opinion. So I think that's why it's Quentin. That's my opinion now. Where's Quentin been all this time, in my opinion? Real simple. He's been waiting for the right time and the right place. Well, the right time, more or less. As hard as he would try to probably get away from Colin, Port and Colin Wood, what's always been home to him? Colin, Port and Colin Wood. He's a Collins, for God's sakes. And really, I think he's been laying in wait and more laying back and watching from afar what's been going on. Um, and just waiting for the right moment to reveal himself and to strike. Who's he going to strike at? Don't know. Again, this, again. My opinion, my theory. That's that's me. Um, <laughs> God, I could be wrong. Very, very wrong. I want to stress this. Very, very wrong about that prediction. I could be. I don't think I am, but I could be. So that's why I think it's Quentin Collins. That's why I think Julia just didn't even bother. Remember, their interaction was so brief, too. And Quinn was sort of like more suspicious of her new boss. I mean, Quinn's suspicious of everybody. But, and that's what I love about Quinn. Quinn will kick your fucking ass up and down the alleyway. Um, which I love that about her. I love that about Quinn. Um, Quinn is probably, I, I know John has created a ton of characters, and I love them all. But Quinn, so far, um, throughout the entire series, and that's saying a lot, because there's a lot of great characters in here, has been my favorite character. Um, just her attitude, her the presentation of her attitude, the, her body language, the no no the at times the no nonsense, and just straightforward. I love that. Um, and <laughs> I love how just he winks at her. He winks at her. Pure Quentin Collins smooth. Um, but <laughs> that's my prediction. I hope you guys enjoyed this review. Link will definitely be in the description box. Like, share, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you here real soon because I got to turn around and do another video.